Hi there, let me show you a few new features in this brand new version of Adobe Illustrator. One of the first features I want to show you today is the ability to sync your settings between your machines. So you all know that you can install uh, your Creative Cloud applications on two machines, typically your machine at home and your machine in the office. So when you change the preferences or the settings on one of the machines, these settings can now be synced. Under Illustrator, Preferences, Sync Settings, I go into the Sync Settings uh, options here. And you can see that I can sync the settings now. I can manage my account from here. But more importantly, I can define what it is I want to sync between my machines. So is it the preferences, the presets, the swatches? I can even select um, the workspaces and the keyboard shortcuts. So imagine that. If you change a keyboard shortcut on your work machine, that setting can now be synced to the cloud. And when you open Illustrator on your home machine, you will find the exact same keyboard shortcuts, making it very easy to have the same keyboard shortcuts on all the machines that you use. Let's cancel out of this and go to another feature, a really cool one, I think. And that is the Touch Type tool. You will find that tool here under the Type tool. And it's right here, Shift-T, the Touch Type tool. And if I go into the artwork itself, let me actually go here into the correct layer and select one of those letters. And you will see that we have a couple of handles on all of the corners here and one on top. And basically what this allows me to do is to go into the image itself and start turning individual letters. And I can make the letters bigger, of course. I can move the letters around and make everything like uh, distort them, for example and really start playing with type. And this is called the Touch Type tool because on the touch screens, you would be able to do that with your fingers. All right? In this case, I'm doing it with my mouse or my, my stylus. So you see, you can take individual letters and actually transform them. But the really cool thing is that if I go back to my Type tool, this is all still text. So I can select the individual letters and actually change my text or the font as needed. So I can transform them and then even go in there and maybe change the text itself. Another great feature is the possibility to, uh, to free transform your elements in a much more intuitive way. You see that I have a tag here that I would like to place on this little cardboard uh, on the side of the bag. Let me zoom in here and actually select that tag with my selection tool, and then go over here to the free transform tool. And once I've selected that tool, you will see a new widget on the artboard itself that allows me to choose between perspective distortion, free distortion, and here, the constraint. Constraint is basically the same thing as if you were holding down the Shift key while making objects larger and smaller. But having it right there on screen will allow you to keep your hands free and do other things. Uh, so if I do here, for example, I will be able to simply distort the image uh, without holding down the Shift key. But let's go back to the free transform tool here. And basically, this widget also works uh, on touch screens. So basically, you would simply touch the widget and select whatever you need to use, and then use that on your artwork. Let's use it for a second. You see that as I go to the corners here, I have these little uh, icons that show me that here I can rotate the element or uh, scale it. So let me just pull that in a little bit, and then maybe go here and rotate the artwork. Uh, so go here and, and push it here. And very, very quickly, I can then place that, uh, that graphic on the tag, distorting it simply by using these very simple icons or uh, touch features right there on the artboard. Another great feature is the ability to use images in, uh, in brushes. We have some examples here on the map. Let me uh, show you here. For example, this vine that indicates the, um, uh, the path on the island. Or if I go over here into the Emerald Lagoon, we see that we have a whole bunch of images that uh, are being placed around the lagoon as a brush stroke. So the way to do that, and let me just zoom out of here for a second. I'm going to fit all in window and go over here to, to the vine here. Okay. 
Basically, you would do that simply by opening your brushes panel and taking an image. This is an image that I created a transparent background for in Photoshop. And all you need to do is to take that image and actually drag and drop it into the brushes panel and choose Pattern Brush. At that point, of course, the uh, Pattern Brush options will open. And you will see that this image is already being applied on, uh, on the brush itself. And then, of course, I can also choose here the way the image runs around corners. So I can choose, for example, auto-centered, auto-between, or auto-sliced. Let me choose auto-sliced for that one and say OK to this. Select all of those lines here and apply that newly created brush. And you will see that this image has now been applied on the brush stroke itself. Let me make it slightly smaller, like 0.5 points here. And the real benefit of that is that at any point, I can go back into the artwork and change it. And you will see that the images actually follow my brush stroke. Another thing that I can do with this feature is, of course, create um, uh, other types of brushes with graphics that I've created in Illustrator. So let me zoom out again, fit all in window, and move over to this area here. Basically, what we see here is that I've created a pattern that goes around the object that I've designed. And you will also notice that this um, the corners are very elegantly created. Well, in the past, this was something that I would have to create a specific symbol for. Illustrator now makes that in an automatic fashion. So let's zoom out of here and uh, go back to to the, the page here and take the element that I want to use, these little, this stroke here. And again, all I need to do is to select that, pull it over into the Brushes panel, create a pattern brush, and say OK to that. And you will see that I have the preview already here. And all it takes is to go into these, uh, to these menus and choose from the various options. One of the options is Auto-Centered, which actually centers the pattern in the corners, or Auto sliced, which gives me another way of showing the corner. And then, of course, I can go in here as well and choose the, uh, the inside corner. Let's say auto centered for that. So I have another type of corner in the, um, uh, in the angles that go inwards. And that is how quickly I can now create the corners for my uh, pattern brushes. So let's say OK to this. The brush appears in my, in my brushes panel here. And all I need to do is select an object and apply that brush to that object. Now, of course, here it's a little bit too big, so let's put that down to 0.5 as well. And you can see the, how immediately this new brush has been applied to my graphic. Another very useful feature is the ability in this new version of Illustrator to export CSS. This has always been a challenge for designers to work with developers. And what I can do now is copy elements from my Illustrator document and transform those into CSS directly so that my developer doesn't have to guesstimate how I created the graphics in Illustrator itself. So for example, if I select an object, for example, this, uh, back, this header background here, and go to my, let me actually close this window here and go to Window CSS Properties, you will see that this has a, uh, um, a class name, of course, header background, and a background color and uh, in two versions, in RGB and a hex code here. And basically, all I need to do then is to take that code and copy and paste it into my, into my web page. So the other thing I can, of course, do, um, provided that my, uh, my web developer has already uh, created all of the classes, all of the um, dividers in the web page, is select everything on my page and generate CSS from here. And basically what that will do, it will create a CSS file and all of the images that are needed to create that page. So very quickly, if I go over here to Google Chrome, we see that uh, I have the page already with all of the elements set. You see I have the text and everything and uh, um, all of the elements on the page. And if I go to Edge Code, what I've done is exported the CSS from uh, Illustrator. I called it My CSS. So just let me add that here as an import URL and save this. And in the background, as I save it, you will see that automatically all of the CSS that I've created in Illustrator has now been applied to the page. And the exact same page that just a second ago was not formatted, didn't have any colors, didn't have any images, well, is now completely formatted.
with all of the CSS that I have created directly here in Adobe Illustrator. There's another couple of features that I want to point out. And let me go back here to my, uh, to my poster and zoom out, fit all in window, and go over here to this page. Let me close this and zoom into here. We've made the font search much, much easier. So for example, if I go here into my font search uh, window here, I have the choice between uh, searching entire font names or searching uh, for uh, first words only. So if I know that I want to use a font that has the name black in it, for example, all I need to do is to start typing black, and you see that all of the fonts that have the word black in it will now appear in my, uh, in my font menu. Or if I look for something like Garamond, very, very quickly, I can access all of the Garamonds that are present on my system right here from the font menu. So I think this is something that will make your life much, much easier for choosing your fonts in Adobe Illustrator. Another thing which I find very cool is the ability now to go from point type to area type. It happens to everyone. You click on the artboard and you start typing. So for example, I'm going to start typing lorem, ipsum, something like that. And then you say, oh, no, I would have liked to have an area type here so that I could have a paragraph in it. So now we see that we have this new little gizmo here that if I double click on it, let me actually click on it because it'll tell you what to do. Double click to convert to area text. So double click. And now this has now become an area text, all right? If this is not an area text, of course, the thing that would happen if I try to make it bigger, it'll scale the whole text. So again, very simply, double click on here. This has now become area text, and I can now start including paragraphs in here as well. The last feature I want to show you is the ability now in Adobe Illustrator to import multiple images and to place them on the page. So to do that, I will simply go here to my File Place command and choose a few images here, like these three, and place. And we see that we now have the place gun, a little bit like in InDesign. And I'm now able to drag and place those images exactly where I want on the page. So this, I think, will be a feature that everybody who uses Illustrator for layout will truly enjoy. So here you go. These are just a few of the features that you will find in this new version of Adobe Illustrator.